2021 got off to a bright start with gold shooting about $2,000 an ounce before rapidly setting back to $1,850 an ounce, which seems to be a level it is comfortable with um, for the time being. With much of the world experiencing strong second waves of the COVID-19 pandemic and extensive lockdowns as a result, economic disruption continues, as do efforts by governments to ameliorate this through economic stimulus, such as the 1.9 trillion US dollars package the new administration in the US is looking to implement. With several COVID-19 vaccines starting to be deployed, there is the prospect of life becoming more normal as 2021 progresses. Some observers think this means that gold prices have peaked as the gradual return to normal economic activity will see downward pressure on prices as investor confidence returns and interest migrates to other sectors of the market. Others view the bigger picture of mounting government indebtedness and the inflationary potential of all the economic stimulus as continuing to bode well for gold with the prospect of prices pushing even higher going forward. Whatever your view, gold at $1,850 an ounce is boom time for the majority of gold producers, many of whom are enjoying margins of about $1,000 per ounce and are putting record amounts of cash on their balance sheets each quarter, paying down debt and ramping up shareholder returns by dividends and share repro repurchases in the process. But gold is a non-renewable resource. Deposits become depleted and new ounces need to be found and brought into production to maintain production levels. 2020 was a good year for gold exploration companies and developers who have found the equity markets open for much of the year and in a way that has not been seen for many years. Investors have tasked explorers and developers with being more aggressive in drilling their projects to rapidly advance them to resource definition and on to economic studies and on to mine build decisions and they by and large have responded. However, investment has generally preferred safe and well-known jurisdictions such as British Columbia and Canada, where there is a familiar and well-trodden permitting process, access to skilled labor and technical services and infrastructure such as roads and power lines already in situ. The exploration results out of British Columbia this year and last year have been considerable as the rate of activity has increased, which will help ensure that it remains a center for new mine development. Gold miners want to build and operate mines in British Columbia, and consequently, the province has seen several projects advancing towards production as gold mines can be built in British Columbia, with a recent example being the Bruce Jack mine, and more mines will certainly follow. Higher gold prices have also resulted in some corporate restructuring as companies seek to surface unrealized value through the spin out of new companies a process that typically establishes a resulting issue with a hand-picked management, tight capital structure, funding route, and a specific project or projects to advance and develop. In short, everything necessary to be successful. The custom-built nature of some of these spin-outs means that they and their projects have been significantly de-risked and therefore have a very clear pathway towards generating shareholder value. For developers, now is a great time to be building gold mines. High gold prices mean development projects by and large have high potential margins and therefore very attractive economics, while low interest rates mean financing projects is very affordable. High gold prices are also reflected somewhat in higher company share prices, which means less dilutive equity financings to help finance mine builds. And for those looking for royalty or stream financing, the growing numbers of players in that space will only seem terms become more favorable. 